Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Welcome back to my Create an RPG series. In this episode, we will be continuing to refine our uh, combat when it comes to our combat uh, collision detection so that we can uh, have it a little bit more surgical when we are actually trying to uh, make use of it. So what we essentially want to do is we have this uh, animation, this montage playing, which is just us slashing. And we want to have it so that we are only detecting during certain parts of this animation and not the whole animation. To do this, we will be making use of something called a notify state, which we have done tutorials on previously. If you want to go into more detail, I'll leave a link for that in the description. Um, and essentially, this will be what we will be calling a damage window. So to create one of these, we will go to our, oh, let's see, there we go, our map or our content folder, essentially. Uh, and here we will be doing the following. We will be creating a folder, which we will be calling, uh, let's say, notifies. Inside here, we will right click and create a blueprint class and we will open up the all classes and we will search for uh, notify and state. So we get an anim notify state. So an anim notify state is a class that allows us to communicate with our blueprint during certain points in time uh, to do something essentially. So we'll call this BP underscore uh, damage, damage window notify state. Very descriptive, very good. Okay, so in here we have a few different things that we can make use of. Uh, a notify state can be using, if you see here on the override, you can see get notify name, receive notify begin, receive notify end, and receive notify tick. So begin is called, uh, an event is called uh, when the start of the notify state starts. End is at the end of the notify state, and tick is whenever a frame is happening during the notify state. So in this case, we're just going to be making use of the begin and end to begin with. So we'll just implement those. So we override them by clicking on them. So now we have both of these available to us here. And what we want to do is essentially, if we start with the begin, is we want to say, uh, if you remember from the last episode, we created this um, attack weapon tag, which we used as sort of our, like, uh, let's start detecting damage. So essentially that is what we want to trigger from here. To do this, we can go and get our mesh component here. This will be the mesh of the one that is uh, currently playing this animation. So if we get owner from this, this means that we will now be getting the actor object reference of the one that owns the reference, which will mean the, uh, the pawn in this case uh, that is doing the animation. So from that, we can use the get component by class. And we can now say we want to have the component that is called uh, BPC gameplay tags, because that's where we added the tag for attacking with the weapon. Once we have that, we can make a valid, valid check here to make sure that we're actually uh, working with something that has a valid uh, reference. And if it is valid, we can say we want to add a tag and hooking up to the valid situation there and rerouting a little bit, we can say we want to add the tag that is state attacking weapon, which is the one that we added on our attack um, before. Like so. And we can also be good and make an origin here. Like so. Uh, and we can use our owner over here as the actor. And we can use the controller here to be uh, the instigator from here uh, but we need to also this is going to be an instigator a pawn object reference which is not exactly what we need we need to have the controller so get controller like so and then we can hook that up as well 
Um, let's give this a little bit more space. It looks a little bit better. Anyway, like so. So now we have essentially said that, okay, if we get to the begin of notify, then we will be adding a tag. So we'll hook this up to the return node here. And we'll check this checkbox saying that we have handled this. Um, if we do not have a valid one, I guess we could have one here that says we have... Do we want to have this one checked? Let's leave it unchecked. That should make it easier for us to determine if we have an error, I think. Anyway, so our begin notify state now will essentially just add the tag. What we want to do in the case of the end notify state is essentially the same. So we'll just copy all of this. And let's copy all of this. Everything except the returns. Go to the end. Go over here. Paste it in. Put it somewhere like, yeah, I don't know, here maybe. And then we can move this up a little bit. Actually, that was not the greatest placement. Let's move this here. So the mesh component needs to be the one that we hook up there. We need to hook up the execution pin here. And if it's valid, we don't want to add a tag in this case. We want to remove a tag. And we want to remove the same tag that we just added, which is the attack state for weapon, like so. Hook up the origin, and then say that we have handled it like this, and have another return state over here that we say false to. So that's all good and fine. So now we essentially have, uh, in theory, something that will be able to add this tag using a notify state instead. Great. So. Going to our animation now, we can actually go here. You see under the notify here, you can go and right click and you can say add notify state and you can see that we have the damage window notify state here. So now we can determine based on the animation, where would we want to start having the animation detect somewhere? So maybe here we want to start detecting damage where the mace is up here or the weapon is up there. So we'll align this so we have the first start here aligned with this frame. And then we'll move forward a bit and say, okay, maybe this is the point where we want to stop. So we'll expand this. And this means that the begin notify state will end. Uh, end. It will happen here. At, uh, so here we will be adding the tag. And here we will be removing the tag. So going back to our slash now, we changed this before to add instead of a... We added the state attacking weapon. We want to change this back to the state attacking just state attacking so it's like saying that we are attacking when we're using this ability in case we want to have that uh, prevent us from spamming uh, the keys and it like interrupting our animations or something like that so the the ability itself would just be adding the st state attacking ability or uh, tag sorry but the animation itself will be adding the state attacking weapon tag on it so if we now demonstrate this we should be getting a in more interesting result than last time, which is, uh, if I can remember which key we actually put the attack on, I do not remember. Uh, we use ability on... Uh, where do we use ability? Was it like the E key? Here, we used it on the E key. Excellent. Okay, so again. Let's put this on the left so I can find it easier. So, uh, making this large, you can see on the top left, attacking, attacking weapon, and then we can say, see that the attacking weapon and attacking state were removed. So, we had, at one point, we had two different attacking tags. But here, you, if you now see here, we can have, or have, we can observe now that the... The line traces that have been created here are much fewer than we had when we added it to the ability itself. So now we're actually just doing traces when we are inside our damage window. So these are, if some, some of this would hit a character, that would mean we essentially hit it. And this is where we can actually demonstrate also the limitations of a system like this. Because if we go to our animation now and we say mm, 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 where is it 
I wonder if this is the play rate. I think it would be the play rate. Uh, so now it's playing at 100%, the normal speed. So if we were to say like play the, the animation at four times the speed, then we should hopefully be able to see it now. You can see that it's doing it very quickly now. And if we save and play again, and we do our animation, you can see it went very, very fast. Although it, it looked a little bit odd even now because you can see it only does a few traces here. And the reason for this is we have some blending out and blending in time on our ability, I believe. Here, default is 0 0.25. So if we put this to zero just for demonstration purposes, then it should be playing the whole animation, you can see. But we only get three different traces in this case. You can see, maybe this makes it more obvious. So we get three different tra traces, meaning that this specific way of checking for damage collision gets weaker the faster you need to have the animation. The faster your animation becomes, the less you can rely on this specific method. And you probably wanted to have something like what I spoke about before where you have different points in the sword and you uh, draw lines between that same point in between the different frames. But even that might be a little bit too little in this case because we would have very uh, varying lines being drawn. Uh, so the faster your animation gets, the more you want to go towards uh, creating something like volumes where you spawn volumes at certain places uh, along the weapon or around the character as a whole that sort of encompasses what you believe the animation to be so that you just go like one quick frame you check like is the damage is there someone overlapping here deal damage to them essentially uh, but yeah this was more for academic purposes uh, let's reset these to what they were before and let's set this back to one so in this case having a detection system like this works fine uh, but now you also see the, the limitations and the use cases for this. So like when you have a little bit of a slower combat system like I have here, then, then this works perfectly fine to uh, make use of a detection system. I think that might be a good place to stop for now. So I hope to see you in the next episode. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.